Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, my illustrious family. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the mental house with me, your host, Khadija. Um, today, family, I want to talk about hurt. You know, hurt feelings. What do we do with our feelings of hurt? What, you know, where we drop that stuff off at? And so this explanation is coming from John Friel and his wife, Linda. And again, the name of their book is Adult Children, The Secrets of Dysfunctional Families. Well, the Secrets of Dysfunctional Families, that is. Um, when we get hurt about something, do we put ourselves down? Do, do we do that? You know, or do we say things like, I shouldn't feel hurt by her. An adult wouldn't feel hurt. An adult wouldn't hurt. Therefore, I don't hurt. My feelings of hurt must be bad. I must be bad. Immature, etc. So because of that, I won't let myself feel hurt right now. I'll pretend I don't. I'll pretend that I don't feel hurt. Or we convert the hurt into anger. Okay, MF, you want to play hardball? I'll play hardball with you. See, this is all ego. See, we're going to try to recognize it. No SOB like you is going to hurt me. Take that, motherfucker, and that, motherfucker, and that. Okay? Or maybe our way of handling hurt is to be passively manipulative or downturn, or downturn puppy dog eyes. We mope around the house, sleep a lot, say we don't feel well, and moan incessantly to other person about how they, how hurtful they have been. Either extreme is dysfunctional. Okay? So now how do we do this? Remember I said? Either we push it away like it doesn't happen, like it's not really an active thing. Um, like Yala always say, call a thing a thing. Call a thing a thing. If you hurt, you got to deal with that and not think that it's machismo and macho and all that stuff. All that shit to just say you know, I'm hurting, and I'm I'm hurt by what you said, or I'm hurt by what you did. My feelings are hurt. That has to happen. And if you are not able to say that, if you're not even able to articulate to another person, then what is going to come out as um, it's come, come, it might come out as anger. You know, okay, Buster, again, you want to play MF? You know, let's make it happen then. Come on, B, and blah, 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 all that crazy, 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 crazy stuff. Either extreme, again, is dysfunctional. It's very dysfunctional. Overreaction and underreaction to our feelings are opposite sides of the same coin, and they both produce the same net results. Denial of our true feelings an unsatisfying outcome on our interaction with the other person. Wow, we'll go there again. Overreaction and underreaction to our feelings are the opposite sides of the same coin. And they both produce the same net results. Denial of our true feelings and an unsatisfying outcome from the interaction with the other person. From our interaction with the other person. Okay. Sadness. Have you ever felt uncomfortable at a funeral or felt uncomfortable with people's reaction towards you at a funeral? Unless you at it, are at the funeral purely for a business reason, the most probable feeling is you will have is sadness. Okay? Now, unless you're there for, again, a purely business reason, that means there ain't nothing attached here. you just there. 
you will have sadness. Terry Kellogg calls sadness the healing feel. To feel sad, we must also let ourselves feel powerless. Sadness is the normal healthy response to loss. The loss may be a parent who has died, a friend who has moved away, or a house that has been burned down. Sadness feels empty at first, but eventually becomes the fuel for renewed hope and existence. Sadness lets us cry without feeling ashamed. It lets us take the time to say goodbye. And best of all, it does not require that we do much of anything to be appropriate for the situation. We feel so uncomfortable at funerals because we don't let ourselves uh, have that moment of sadness. You know, and I'm not talking about these people that come up and show up at funerals like my cousin and them or, or Ray Ray and them and Pookie that jump up in there and pull down the casket and try to pull the people out. I ain't talking about that because that's not really no set. That's really show and tell. Show and tell. Just a game I play. That's what the hell that is. So if y'all doing that at the funerals, stay home. Don't go. Ain't nobody trying to see that. And I don't want to mix the two up. Wow. Wouldn't it feel wonderful if the next time we experienced a great loss, our friend or relative would simply just walk up to us, hug us, and say, I feel sad. Not, I feel sad for you. Just, I feel sad. That will be all that is required, and that will be all that is needed, you know, in that moment. It stays that, it says that you are with me. It says that we are common bonded by this thread. No, I'm sad for you. I'm sad. Not I'm sad for you. I'm sad. I'm sad. It says that you're human. It says that we are all helpless in the face of death. It says that we're all in this together. And that's affirming, honest, real, and deep. Nothing else really needs to be said. Nothing else really needs to be said. All right? So, just to look at sadness. A real, real look at the feeling of sadness. All right, I'll be back in the next video. Hey, don't forget to hit the like button and then hit the little bell too that's right there on the side of the button. So, if you do, you will be reminded every time that I load up a video. And if it's worth listening to and worth hearing, please hit it. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.